So we are Team Elysian Shadows, and Elysian Shadows is, if you can actually see it, it is being marketed as a next generation 2D RPG. And I know that sounds oxymoronic, but what, what it is, is it started off as an old school style 2D RPG, kind of like Chrono Trigger or Secret Man, I don't know if you've played those games before. But you know, it, it was traditional, it was 16-bit, it was pixel art, and as we were working on this game and this engine, we started wanting to add more and more things that weren't, that weren't in traditional games. We have a rigid body physics engine, we have the cameras actually full 2D and 3D, the environments are fully 3D. We have dynamic lighting that supports point lights, spotlights, and directional lights. We have omnidirectional shadow maps. The audio is 3D and positional, and we have a full 3D rigid body physics engine. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that in PowerPoint. So we're best known for a YouTube series called Adventures in Game Development. Probably never heard of us. Believe it or not, we're kind of famous on the internet. We have almost <laughs> we have almost 10,000 subscribers. And the way this thing started is when I was like 17 or something, living in my mom's attic, I uh, was coding for the Sega Dreamcast. That was like my first. That was my baby. Uh, that's what this originally started on. It was just like a little engine for the Dreamcast, um, and we were recording uh, ourselves developing this game for like you know we'll release this as end game footage or whatever when we're done. And we just put it on YouTube and it kind of like exploded. So here we are now, like a couple years later, we have this online series called Adventures in Game Development, which has really gotten us famous in the gaming community. We've had plenty of contacts. We have the publishing deal, like I said. So what we do is every so often we release what is a chapter of Adventures in Game Development. I guess that's not actually happening. Anyway, so what it is, it's just like, it shows developing the game from the perspective of the entire team. It shows art, music, uh, coding, scripting. And it doesn't hide anything either because like, while we're doing this, you'll see the engine crash out or something screw up. And it's real time. It's like, a lot, a lot of cussing, a lot of late nights, a lot of substance abuse. So here's, here's dynamic lighting, for example, that I'm showing off like the point lights. Actually, this is a good clip to show you like kind of the next generation thing. So that, that's a that's a point light. These are shadow maps cast off of uh, 2D sprites. The game is actually all 2D sprite based, but it's assembled in a, in a way, we, we wrote our own level editor that allows us to create 3D environments, 3D maps, as you can see, it's 3D using only 2D graphics, and then we're able to apply these advanced rendering techniques and shaders to that. So that, that's why we're next gen old school and we're still on the second Dreamcast and it's it's going to be actually a, a physical release on the Dreamcast a hard hard disk actual release no seriously it's, it's serious. It no I'm absolutely serious um, so yeah we quit our jobs we got some initial investments so we're at, we have a Kickstarter starting August first and after that it's either we finish the game under a bridge or we hit it big so we'll see. I just want to show you a little more here because it's just got to get a little interesting. Showing off a little bit of the 3D rigid body physics engine, which is actually why I did not sleep last night, is because I was working on that. Uh, let's see. And of course, I passed it. There we go. So, uh, Particles, 3D space, blah, blah, blah. Um, we wanted physics to play largely into the gameplay of Elysian Shadows. We wanted all of the, the objects in space not to be just static sprite backgrounds. We wanted you to be able to pick up and throw things like you're getting your ass beat by a boss or something. You can drop a potion out of your inventory and smack the shit out of him with it. Maybe he has a weakness, you didn't know about it. So from its inception, the physics engine was something that we'd always envisioned playing uh, pretty big part in EX. So like for example, this is a this is a spell that basically like uh, it's, an it's it's an implosive gravitational force spell. We can also apply these spells to mass certain objects and certain materials so we can we can implode in metallic objects and then like shoot them out. Kinda like uh sure yeah like that. that's just that's just showing that off uh, Jump around a little more. Like this, just this is our artist. He's not very interesting. <laughs> we're, an inter we're an international team, so like you'll watch this video, and we all have different accents. And we're the rednecks. And 
Here, here's a here's a 3D scene with the, the specular mapping and the, the bump mapping. Granted, these these normal maps and specular maps are not accurate. This was a test we did with my program that just flipped out for us, so it's not actually going to look like that. Basically, and, and we are some some areas depending on what looks better is more 2D, some are more 3D, and then we have dynamic transitions for other areas and like in combat during cutscenes and stuff we can. We can move the camera down to more of a three D perspective to give a, a better look. Which track is this? No, that's not his best. This is twenty five. This is twenty five. Yeah. I'm trying to find one where Tyler. Oh, that that's what you find. Behind. Like all kinds of nice stuff. So what? Yeah, that was for sure what was that? That was yeah. Was, this was Tyler trying to do the, the prototype battle system. And ignore the sword coming out of the front. Yeah, it's a sword. It's a beta. It explodes in crystals where the gravity doesn't affect them. Very raw, the footage here is very raw, but I mean it's real, it's game development. You see us make it as it happens, you see it all fuck up too. But ultimately it, it winds up working in the end, so you want to start the actual presentation? I just wanted to give you a background because if we just started off and said we're well, a game to start off in Dreamcast, so you'd be like... So that's kind of like the rundown of it. YouTube Adventures of Game Development. It's more than the other one. Like I said, we are uh, the Sin Shadows, um, the next generation 2D, 3D role playing game. Um, so, what is the Sin Shadows? Um, like I was say, it did start off as a uh, Dreamcast title. Um, Obviously, we supported Windows, that's what we were actually developing on. Um, but it's really grown from there. Um, you know, we actually got uh, Eddie Ringel, our Android guy. Um, you know, he got us running on the Wii U. Yeah, yeah, so right now we're Windows, Linux, OS X, um, Wii Android, iPhone, Sega Dreamcast, with plans for more. We wrote this engine from scratch, and I wrote a uh, cross platform C API that allows us to seamlessly impl implement the, the driver calls for video and audio on. Uh, on basically any embedded device. The guy who moved us over to the Android had actually never even seen my source code for the engine. He was doing this in parallel while I was working on uh, on gameplay stuff. So like this this is kind of cool and like people people who watch our videos are really interested in this library. And, and the thing is that like they can go off and implement it on the Wii or something or the Wii U. They've never seen my code. I can link against their version. They can take my Dreamcast build, you know, so it's kind of it's kind of communistic in that like we help each other out, except for it doesn't slide like on. Um, so it's not communistic. Um, we always get asked this question in podcasts, how long have we been doing this? Um, like Valve mentioned, this kind of started. Not a fair question. Uh, we met no school, we've been really good friends since then. Um, so if you go back and look at the very first game development video, it was released over seven years ago. We obviously haven't been programming like this for seven years. Um, really, it's been about four years that since uh, the chapter 21. Right? Yeah, so. um, you know, we really hit the ground running. We got really serious. We decided we were either going to have to commit and make this actually a thing, or you know, we're just going to let it drop off. Um, and now we've got our job. So yes, now we've got our job. We're committing. <laughs> So yeah, in addition to the game, though, we, we developed this multi-platform framework called the Gyro, which is like a, it's a multimedia abstraction layer for whatever console or platform you want to release on. We built our engine from scratch, and then we built a, a level editor slash toolkit that integrates with this engine and even allows you to play your levels on the Dreamcast or UI or whatever and invoke them separately to help develop the game. So uh, I guess one of the questions that uh, we need to address is where's the rest of our team? Not not, I'm not doing the art, art or anything like that. Um, Falco and I are the only ones here in Alabama. Um, actually, besides Eddie, the only ones in the United States. Uh, Patrick Wallach found us two years ago. Um, he actually joined the team as a concept artist. Really, really amazing. Um, he had never done pixel art ever. 
Um, everything you just saw was, was pixel art. We've done that since he's been with us. Um, so we consider him a re artist. Um, kind of underneath of him is uh, the Angular here. Uh, he found us more recently. Uh, he's actually from St. Petersburg, Russia. Uh, he's a very classically trained artist. Um, he actually did a painting uh, for our Kickstarter that we're give away. Um, but he, the story of Pixel Art Force is very, very good. Um, Daniel Tyndall is one of the guys that's going to come and join us for July. Um, he came in as a web designer originally. He did a whole brand new website. It's amazing. Um, but once the website was done, you know, what was he going to really work on? Um, so he's done a ton of PR. He updates the front page of the website every day with uh, our interviews and stuff like that. And he's starting to build design. Um, Connor Lenning is the actual rock star. He uh, has a really big uh, background in like actually playing in bands, like no producing. He's got a whole sound studio in his basement. Um, so he brings like this whole. Can you play song real quick? Sure, we're talking about Connor. So, so one of the really cool things about Connor is so we talked about the, the fusion of, of old school and like modern style with the artistic aspect of listening to So we're trying to do the same thing with the audio aspect. So this guy has a very rock background, very modern music. He produces like electronica, metal bands, stuff like that. So what we've done is we've taken, we've sampled, uh, uh, we've taken samples from uh, platforms like the Super Nintendo and the Genesis, like old school 16-bit style melodies, and we've We've also fused that with modern instruments, rock influences, uh, choirs, orchestras, and it's really cool. I mean, just like the graphics, it's it's nostalgic and and, and familiar, but it's also really new sounding. And that's kind of what we're trying to go with for it. Maybe we can play a song for you here. Which one is it? Um, yeah, play the platform agnostic because all all platform specific calls are made to live gyro which then results in, in the true platform dependent implementation. So ES Gamma is C++, C++ 11 and it's fully extensible through Lua for gameplay scripting and uh, storyline and that's where he comes in. He's, he's the lead gameplay engineer. I just made an engine. 
uh, that's C++, and then uh, ES Toolkit or ESP because it sounds trendier, is the toolkit we made because the, the way we're making worlds and, and the stuff that our engine does, a uh, traditional 2D level editor really doesn't give us the, the kind of control we need to be able to create things and elevate them in 3D and change the normal direction of a sprite to face like this and create normal mouse and bump mouse and stuff. So it, it shares a significant amount of code with ES Gamma, and uh, like I said, it also supports, it has like a cute little drop down menu we can show you in a minute where you can pick like, run it on the Dreamcast, run it on Windows or whatever, because so that's, that's the software arsenal. Um, I guess the next part is some people have been asking us about our, uh, I guess, production deal that we worked out. Um, how many of you are familiar with Pierce the Water? Really? Really? So, oh, we have a cool story then. So, so the guys who make Pure Solar, like we we've, we've been big fans of them. Like, dude, freaking coded an awesome game for the Sega Genesis. And I like, love the Sega Genesis. You know, and, and they made a, a physical release. So apparently, we've been mutual fans of one another. He's been watching Adventures in Game Development. That whole company, Watermelon's been watching Adventures in Game Development and following our progress for quite a while. I got an email one day asking if, if we would like to publish with them since. I don't know if you knew, but they just did a, a Kickstarter for the second Dreamcast for HD, for Pure Solar HD, and it was highly successful. So they've already invested a significant amount of money into the, the physical production and distribution of Dreamcast games now. So we're, we're signing with them, you know, to create physical Dreamcast games now. And uh, they've also uh, offered to give us access to dev kits for whatever other platforms we would like to target in the future, but that's the the engine's platform independent. This it runs on the freaking Dreamcast. It'd be a joke to put it on the 3DS, Xbox One, PS4, whatever. All that will come down to Kickstarter one day and stretch one. So that's hopefully the one we're saying. That's how we show uh guys up. I don't know if we actually do this. Yeah, show this yeah. because I had I'll show you what I was up all night working on last night. It's a little sketchy. Resolution is <coughs> uh, projectors lead on the stuff to a toolkit. I promise the SDK looks better than that. So I like here's a lot of these sandboxes, but here's a lot of our worlds. Uh, here's that drop down menu. <coughs> Where you can pick your platform, whether we run it, sends it over the network, uh, TCP, IP to your Dreamcast, or <coughs> all that crap. Um, so let's look at here's the first panel. So there's three tile layers. Tiles have all their own like cute little properties and stuff, which are over here that you can't see, but you know, it's basic tile design stuff. Then there's a bunch of uh, additional features that we support. Like uh, elevation is the concept we use to, to elevate things in 3D space to make a, a truly three dimensional world geometrically out of purely 2D sprites. Back up for some of our three layers. Right, so I mean, we've got three different layers um, for when we build the game. Um, and as long as they're all the same elevation, it's one, two, three, always. But in order to build a bridge and have like a tree and stuff like that, we need to be able to break them up and actually layer them. So you technically have like layer one um, at like 16 elevation and layer two down below and it's still going to be rendered on top. Uh, but we need a really good way to be able to represent that and, and uh, kill it. Um, so that's where the decoration is coming. That's where it's the decoration. That's the elevation value is one, two, four inch decorations. Um, there's also a bunch of other cool tools that ESDK has, like it has sprite sheet managers and things like that. I'm um, working on making it support uh, uh, bump maps and normal map. What that was was a sheet manager. Dude, um, one know. of our old artists uh, asked us for a really easy way to take stuff from the Photoshop and do to bring them into the engine. He didn't want to have to line everything up himself, or whatever. And he was really kind of, I guess, <coughs> making the drawing and it needed to be broken up. So that's where we came up with a sheet manager there. So you can take any source image, it will pad it to uh, power to copy it over to the radio sheet, save it. It's now in the tile sheet and it'll be right there below. So if this runs like crap, 
It runs on the Dreamcast. It's, it's the dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's the trump card for like everything. It is, dude. <laughs> I mean, one frame a second, it runs on the Dreamcast. I don't know what your problem is. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <coughs> uh, where's the trunk alert? I see a blue script crash. That's fantastic. Oh yeah, dude. Is it because you're doing this on Mac? And why it's messing up? Uh, I'm willing to agree with that. <laughs> That's probably it. <laughs> this is this is my shrine level where like people just don't mess with this level. We all have like our own sandbox level where it's like that level. No, that's where like secret evil crap happens, and this is mine, that's kind of what I've been doing, so it's the thing that I've been doing is, so we have like a, a Jesus Christ, a truly 3D world and all this stuff, and uh, physics plays a, a big role in the game, but the physics engine itself is fundamentally 2D, the collision geometry itself is also 2D, and I'm trying to, to make it a full-fledged three-dimensional physics engine using only 2D uh, 2D collision primitives, which is way cheaper to handle than 3D. So there's no way we can do uh, full 3D geometry. Uh. Okay, so what I was working on. Oh, it is a marshal. <laughs> can't see my friend. Need that go. It's my god. It's okay, so uh, I can. What I was trying to do is I was working on some fancy effects. Like these are rigid bodies. You can transfer, they all have like mass, moments of inertia, all that crap. Everything in the game is a simulated rigid body. And uh, I was trying to make it where you can stand on them and like they resolve not only in two-dimensional space but in three-dimensional space. Oh yeah, so obviously like I said, it's a 3D game. Various perspectives to prove it. Um, so let me go back to the perspective. Oh Jesus. What I was working on last night is destroying these things. So you can see it, you can take these, shatter them on each other. And what's actually happening here is you're able to give uh, all these different entities different uh, durability factors, coefficients of restitution, all that crap, so you can make different things shatterable. And when they shatter, I'm dynamic <coughs> at runtime, chopping it up and recalculating for every particle uh, what the resultant mass, moment of inertia, and all that crap is from its parent proportionally, and I'm recursively re adding all that shit back into the physics engine. Which is why I haven't slept. <laughs> but it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. And, and all of those little particles themselves are, are fully 3D simulated things as well. And one of the cool things is obviously there's no way in hell the Dreamcast can support all these particles. So, what I was doing last night, or no, probably this morning, I don't remember was when there's enough shit on screen, there's a, there's a magical number that you, that's platform dependent where they just start fading out. Like on the PC, whatever you can build on the screen, it doesn't care. Like the Dreamcast, there will only be like a couple of piles before the particles start fading out. So, I think I might have some lights in this room. Oh yeah. Yeah, you have a stone. Yeah. Check it out. Here's my, here's my uh, own narcissism here. I imported myself because it's my shrine. Don't fuck with my shrine. Sure did. Right, here's some random. So these, uh, oh, here's uh, omnidirectional shadow mapping. Only this one is not very good. Carry on. I just want one with the button that so it looks good. It takes forever to compile to see me. Are there any questions? Yes. Any questions, I guess, about... Um, yep, there's one. Yep, it's elevated. What do you hope to have done by August 1? We've uh, got a pretty yeah, big spoiler. Um, one of our Wait, what are you spoiling? Boss okay, yeah. Uh, uh, we've got, uh, we wanted to have up to like the uh, first 
that's true Boston game kind of done. I mean, all the areas are going to be hundred percent complete. I mean, obviously not, not all the quests and things like that are going to be in the game. But we want to be able to show off the diversity between the town, the forest, and show kind of the transition. Also, like this page of uh, yeah, of gameplay um, to uh, the really dark kind of dungeons that we're going to be doing. Um, and then, like, uh, I don't know if there's any Castlevania fans in the audience, we wanted like bigger than life bosses, all kinds right. of crazy. This, stuff. this is our first boss fight that we're in the middle of pixeling. And, oh God, I where did you go? Oh, here it is. Oh, Donald. Yeah. So, so what the, the thing that's cool about this guy is is it, is the ruins themselves are super dark. It's it's very like an ambient atmosphere. <coughs> These are going to be dynamic lights with particles. He's going to be like this giant ass three D guy, like moving his hands, where you're actually using the platforming mechanics in three D, jumping around. I don't know if I mentioned that, but we also we have platforming mechanics like dash and jump to to help uh, give the the combat a little more depth and action orientedness. So this this will really bring everything together. And we wanted like we wanted to like okay, pick up rocks and stuff and you have to use the physics engine to throw boulders at him and stuff. So and the boss fight for this dude is just so epic. He, he sampled the drums from Sonic the Hedgehog too. Yeah. Yeah. Just trying to find another picture for you guys. Probably doesn't work now. Anyway, I guess, any questions at all, or? That's, yeah, that's just pretty much it for us. What's up? Can you say more about the plot again? Sure, let me read it off the website. I'm just kidding. Um, it's it's kind of hard to see. We, we're very careful not to give away too much. So basically, ES takes place in a world that is caught in constant conflict between magic and technology. Magic is bestowed upon people who are religious in this world. It's, it's like a gift from God, it's like a, a symbol of faith. Uh, whereas other people who are, who are seeing as heretics, uh, people like scientists, scholars, the, they rely more on technology in their day-to-day -day lives. Um, but then the world itself is littered with all these crazy ruins that no one understands what, why they're there, no one understands what the previous civilizations, why they were ruined or anything like that. And it's full of uh, a lot of advanced technology, and a lot of the gameplay, and a lot of the dungeons is, you know, so, so. is you uh, excavating these ruins, and, and you find yourself in the conflict rising between uh, magic and technology because you stumble upon something technological in these ruins that affects this balance. That's all I can say. How about uh, the, the logo? It's close to it, but ah, it's also spoilers. Uh, no, you're going to get it. Okay, well, you got the one. Uh, uh, um, uh, yeah. uh, so, Elysian Shadow is far enough. I'll get asked about the name origin, too, and the logo you're talking about, the moon. Um, so, in like, Spanish folklore, Norse folklore, um, you know, Greek, Greek, even, well, they all mention Elysian. Um, it's a metaphor for heaven, so to speak. Uh, it's a, it's a, Paradise. Paradise. Right. And uh, you know, our actual world of the list of shadows is named the Asphodel, which is a flower that's commonly found in Elysium. Um, but Elysian shadows uh, is like the darker side of paradise. Like, what is it that right. works it's, outside it's a the paradise? You're, it's, a, it's an intentional paradox, like, you know, like the shadow of paradise, or, or the, the beauty is not all that it's cracked up to be. And even in, in the gameplay footage that we've shown off, like, we always try to make it a point that the overworld is like lush and beautiful and it's very diverse and very organic looking, but then we have screenshots from things like the ruins where it's like, whoa, what the fuck yeah, they they sure Right. Um, let's see if I can Yeah, our musician is totally like He's gonna watch this. He's totally gay for games like Resident <laughs> Evil and uh, Silent Hill. Silent Hill. Hill. He's he's very into survival horror games, and, and there's definitely some survival horror influences. That's actually what he's been pitching our game as. Um, he's been doing some PR as well. He's been going to different, uh, like mostly just musical sites and things like that. So he's been this, this was us playing. What are you? We have a, a dynamic light porch that we can't really see, but there's a whole bunch of creepy ass people like surrounding you, so we're kind of playing around with some survival order aspects of the ruins. Basically, the ruins 
and not as pretty and calm as, as above ground. Okay. Yeah. I'll find yeah. Yeah. You see a little bit? You see the teeth? Over here it's a lot better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you see what I mean? That's us trying to do like a creepy kind of style in a 2D game. Tyler did the, uh, the, the uh, emissive dynamic lighting fire particles, which look really bad at the same game. You know, I have that. Uh, that's totally a spoiler from Adventure to Game Development Chapter 27. Yeah, no photography. <laughs> we were uh, on the same code base and the same works but I wasn't just walking back and forth. But, uh, <coughs> what the f what is that? It's the barrels. Force mask. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can kind of see the, the torch. Um, the particles of the flame don't really stick as much as I would like. And that's, that's just the amazing. That You kind of see what we were going for with that too, and like uh, when you go down in the ruins in these scary places, like you're gonna have just like a single source of light besides like maybe the glowing crystals or like the eyes of these robots or enemies and stuff that are glistening back at you from the light being emitted. Um, so it's gonna be pretty creepy. Uh, he even put together like that one horror demo level, but like the way that he made the the soundtracks loop, they're never the same twice, they don't really overlap perfectly. So you have like this kind of chaotic dissonance the whole time. It's freaky to listen to it. So. Any other questions? So the uh, Dreamcast release, you can have game music for it. Yes, awesome. Oh, absolutely. And <laughs> fishing this. rod. Dude, okay, and so so <laughs> I grew up going to the Dreamcast. <laughs> I used to walk to back when I was blind, no games. To just to buy like all these crazy Dreamcast peripherals. So when I was a kid, I made this this program where it would just pull the the Dreamcast uh, Maple Bus, which is the controller bus, and you play with the controller, and it would show you how it's reading input. So I, I was able to figure out how like the the light gun, the fishing rod, the Dreamcast maracas. I know how to develop for all of them because I've, I've seen how they take input. We want to have like mini games. And, Dreamcast version where it's like, oh shit, better plug in my maracas or my light gun now. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, BMU support, and, and we we talked about it. So I know it sounds crazy, but we, we're going to have a tool that lets you upload your save file from whatever platform you're in to the cloud, and then convert it to whatever platform. So you're not stuck on any one platform. It's obviously you need to play on the Dreamcast for the BMU support. The BMU mini game with that 8-bit BMU assembly. We've also talked about having like maybe some sort of epic item you have to build and to get all the parts you have to go to a system or a certain amount of system to get these parts you can go to find them on my right. right. You have to get it from the dream gas. Yes. Sounds a pretty good mark. <laughs> you got a <laughs> fun That was not the intention. Yeah. Who would mind you yeah. Well thanks yeah. for listening guys. Yes. Check us out at Ventures in Game Development or AlysseanShadows.com. We appreciate it. Well, that will go down the longest one we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> Three hours. Thank you for coming. Thanks, man. Yeah, Thanks. 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 Than